now we're going to begin by creating our simple iOS game. And we first start by opening up Xcode and going to create a new Xcode project. Once it loads up, we're going to select a single view application and press next. And in the product name, we give the name of our project. Now, this is not where we give the application its name itself. This is just the project we use to create the application. So you can be anything you want. So I'm going to simply call mine Tappy Hands Anyway. And then make sure that the language is set on Swift. In devices, we can choose universal iPhone or iPad. Now, by default, it's set to iPhone, and I'm going to keep it that way. Towards the end of the course, we are going to be talking about how we can convert this application to work both on iPhone and iPad, thus making the application universal. But until then, we're going to keep it solely on iPhone just to make the developing process a little bit easier before we talk about it, and then we go on to converting it universal. We're then going to press next and create this application to our desktop. There we go. So we now have our project of our application all set up. And if you're familiar with Xcode itself, then this is going to be pretty basic. But it's the first time you've ever opened Xcode. Don't worry, it can look a little bit daunting. But we're talking through each process in great detail to make sure that nothing blows over your head and you can follow along pretty simple. So in the previous lecture, I talked about the downloadable resource pack, a part of this um, course. Now in this resource pack it contains the full application that we're going to be creating. And it also contains a couple of image files that we're going to be using in our app. Now, if you haven't already, make sure you go download them. And inside, you can see the two image files that we're going to be using. We have the logo of our application, and we have a nice little background uh, that we're going to be using throughout the whole app itself. Now, throughout this course, each lecture is going to solely focus on a specific part of the app as we develop it. And in this first lecture here, we're going to be solely creating and designing our home screen. We're going to be adding these images on the interface while we design the home screen. And the home screen itself is going to have a few other capabilities. It's also going to have on the home screen where we display the high score within our application. So when we play it, we get a high score. It's always going to update and display within the home screen. Now, we ain't going to set up the configuration for that just yet. We're going to, again, solely design the home screen, making sure everything looks good. And again, the main reason we're going to be having a home screen as well is so we can create our start game button so we can begin to play the game. So again, then first then, we need to add these two images within our project. And we do this by heading over to our assets folder here. Our assets folder is where we store all the image files that we're going to be using within our project. So all we simply do is select what we need and drag and drop them into the list here. So now we've done that, they're imported into our application. Just as simple as that. There's nothing else that needs to be done. So at any given point for our application, we can reference the names of these image files, and it will call upon them and display them where needed. Again, very, very simple. So let's begin then to design our home screen interface. And we do this within our main dot storyboard, as you can see now. By default, we're given a basic view, as you can see, which is the first view that loads up when we go to build and run our application, whether it's on our device or the simulator. So we're going to be using this as our home screen. Again, like I mentioned before, it's going to display a numerous amounts of things. We're going to have our logo. We're also going to have the ability to display the high score, the highest score that's been achieved in our game. And the main reason for it as well, we're going to have our start game button. So we need to design a pretty nice interface for it. So we're first going to start then basically from the ground up. That's like a way of how I like to design my own interfaces. And that is by laying down a background and then placing the objects on top of it. So we do this by heading over to the objects section at the bottom right here. I can um, collect and drag it up so we get a little bit more room to, for us to see where we're scrolling, what objects we need. And we're going to be needing a UI image view, which is this one just here. Now, to add this in, all we simply do is select it and drag and drop it in. There we go. 
So we now got our image view in. We can display images from within side of it. Now the image view or the image that we display inside of it basically stretches to the radius of our image view. Now we want to create the background image to be full screen. So we make this image view simply cover the whole of our application screen. So now that it covers it all, we need to tell this image view what image it basically needs to display to our user. So let's drag down this object section a little bit further down now so we've got more room at the top. And make sure you're selected here on the attributes inspector, which contains all the attributes that we can edit for this image view. Now the main one we want to do first is, within our image view here, is the image. Now this is where we're placing the name of the image file that we've imported into our project to be displayed. Now we only have two, you can either choose to type it out or you can drop down the menu and see the two images we have within our project. So I'm going to select the background and there we go. Just like that we now have our background image being displayed within our application. How cool is that? We haven't done a single line of code yet and we're now displaying this wonderful image within our app. It's pretty cool. So let's take it to the next step then. So as I mentioned previously before, this application is eventually going to become universal and work on different screen sizes. And this is something that I like to do with all background images when it comes to creating a universal app. Now this actual image is not the same proportion to the actual screen. And there's a great reason behind that. That's so when we blow it up on a bigger screen such as an iPad, it doesn't get stretched or move about and cause pixelation or distortion. Now we can change how it gets displayed. Currently by default, the content mode of this is scale to fill. This basically means the image stretches to fill the proportion of the image view. Now as good as that is, I kind of don't want that because if this was a more detailed image, it would seem a little bit out of proportion. So what I'm going to do is change it up. Now there's two we can choose, Aspect Fit or Aspect Fill. Both of them make sure the image fits in proportion uh, to itself so it doesn't stretch it out. Aspect Fit does that perfectly and it contains it inside of our image view. So as soon as the first kind of um, side of the image uh, touches the image view, it stops it from expanding. But this creates these little bars and it will be very different depending on again what size the image actually is but that's pretty cool though because we know the image is not being stretched or you know into different proportions what i'm going to do is select aspect fill which does the exact same but rather than when the first kind of um side of the image view hits it it goes for the second one which the second one will be our top and bottom. So the image view is actually hanging out a little bit to the left and right. Now even though we can't see it, we always need to make sure if this ever happens, we need to make sure that we select clip to bounce. Now because it's the background image, we're never going to see this anyway, but make sure that you do this as a habit for if you ever do use aspect fill, uh, because sometimes if you're using your image view for it not to be you know, contained to the full screen, maybe it's smaller, uh, when we build and run, the image is going to hang out, again, the borders of our image view. So make sure you set that as a habit always when you use Aspect Fill. But that's all we need to do to create a beautiful in proportion background image for our application. So then let's start to add in all the other objects that we're going to need. So let's bring our objects back up here. So let's drag and drop in then another image view, which we're going to be using this for the logo of our game. We're going to scroll up to the top here. We're going to drag and drop in two labels, as you can now see, and then a simple UI button. And I'll place that at the bottom there. They're the four objects that we're going to be needing to create and design our home screen. So let's bring down our objects then, as we no longer need to use them. So let's start with these two labels then. Let's place these center. So what are these two labels? Well, one of them is going to display our high score. Well, it's kind of a lie. Both of them are going to display our high score. One of them is just going to simply say the word high score, and the second one display the number value of that high score. So what we're going to do then is drag them over, and we'll do it to both of these, and we'll just make this one a little bit bigger. There we go. Drag it to the top there. About there. Bring it down a bit. Make our logo image a little bit bigger. And then we do the same to our second label here. 
But ooh, let's bring that back there. But what I do is make this quite a bit bigger than uh, the first label. So again, that's going to display the number value. And then we're going to have our button, which we got here, which I will drag and drop this over. There we go. So we'll play around with the sizes in just a moment once we've created them. Let's go through them all individually. So even though we've got the two labels there, we'll start with the actual image view itself. So in here, we want to make sure it's displaying our logo, just like how we did with our background image. There we go. Tap your hands. It's now all in. But this is the perfect example of it dragging it out of proportion. Let's change the scale mode here to the opposite of um, aspect fill to aspect fit. There we go. Fits in quite nice. That looks really, really good. So now we've done that then, we jump into our label. And what we're going to do is let's give it a background color first. So before we go any further then, at the very bottom, we have the ability to give it a background within the attributes inspector. By default, it's selected on default, which means it has 100% transparency on the background. Let's give it a background color of white. There we go. And then we'll centralize the text to the middle. Pretty cool. So the color scheme that we're going to be going for in this application is going to be blue and white. So let's change the text color here from default black to blue. Looks pretty nice. And within the font here, we've got our system. Press the little text button here, the T. And that brings up this little menu where we can change the font from its current standard system font to a custom font. And then we, basically what we get now then is all the different fonts that we can use within Xcode. And one of my personal favorite ones is Avenir. I'm going to choose the black font, which is nice and bold. And we're going to increase the text size here. Let's go all the way to about 40. That might be a good one. Press done. And then change the text that's being displayed within it. So by default, we got label being displayed in there. We simply have it say high score. There we go. Nice and predominant. You can see it just there. High score and underneath it will have the number value of the user's highest score in the game. So pretty much we're going to copy what we've just done in a sense. We're going to centralize the text, but I don't want it to be the same. Let's just keep it a transparent background and have the text white. So change that to white and then we'll give it the same font. We'll go through the same process that we've just done to our previous label, Avenir, select it to black, but we're going to make this quite big. A lot bigger than the text label above. Let's go to 70. That should be nice. And by default, we'll put the number zero in because when our user first build and run the application, before they've even put in a high score and played it, we're going to tell them that the high score is zero. So, you know, the first time they played it, they're guaranteed to beat and get a high score. Pretty good. So what I just have to do now then is work with the button itself. Now the button, I want to make it kind of similar to the high score label, kind of create this theme where we're using the labels and buttons to be kind of um, separators of the content on the screen. So what we do then is we're going to change the uh, text color. Let's actually do it a little bit different. We're going to keep it the same, but a little bit different. And what I mean by that is we'll give the text color white as well. And we'll simply have this say start game. And again, give it the same font. Now, I believe the font size we went, we went up to in Avenue was 40 and the black there. I'm not sure if we go the same kind of a size within the button. Let's see how that would look. Do you know what? We could work with that. That should be pretty good. And I'll drag this up uh, as high as I want it to, probably about there. And we're also going to give this one a background color of white too. Now, you can't really see it, but what the cool thing about it is we can change the transparency and fade it out a little bit because it can look a little bit boring if we do this kind of design. So let's change it up a little bit. So now we select that white, click on the actual box itself, and that brings up our spectrum. What I want to focus on is the opacity section here. We can bring this down and let's see if we brought it down to about 25%, or I can just type in 25 here, get rid of it there. How does that look? That looks pretty nice. It still kind of separates it, but it adds that something different, a little bit something extra inside of our button. So let's place it up to 140 in height. Looks pretty good. And we'll bring our label down so it touches. There we go. That's going to be the base value 
of our home interface. Doesn't look like much, it didn't take as much to create, but it does what it needs to do. It's very bold, it shows us there's the high score, there's the start game button, let's begin, click it, let's go and play the game. That's what we simply want an interface to do. We don't want to be overcomplicated. we don't want to make it look you know, uh, too shabby, we want to make sure it gets to the point, it's quite pleasing on the eye, and again, doesn't overcomplicate anything to our user. So there we go then, we've got all the objects on the screen now, all we're going to have to do now is add in a few little extra touches to customise our view. And that would be to add a nice corner radius on the objects, and I think it would go really well with the background on our label and our button. Kind of a, you know, take away the sharp edges. But before we can do that, there's a few more things that we actually need to do. Now, like I did say I mentioned before, we are going to be creating these applications to be universal to work on uh, iPhone and iPad, so we need to add something called constraints. Now, we'll be doing that further on in the course, but what we need to focus on right now is the constraints to make sure it works on every different iPhone screen that we have available. So by default, you can see at the very button here, if I press this uh, view as iPhone 7, uh, it's currently designed on an iPhone 7 screen. If I went for the iPhone 7 Plus, you can see, it doesn't fit on. We've still got a little extra spacing because that screen is a lot bigger. And vice versa, if you go for the smaller iPhone or the smallest one, the view, it just does not work. So we need to make sure that we add constraints so these objects adjust to fit perfectly and display perfectly on each screen. So how we do this then is we first start with our background image and we go down to our constraints at the bottom right here to this one which adds a new constraint and we're going to pin this to all the edges around. So we're going to add a constraint to all four sides, setting them at zero, so we're going to anchor them to the edges of our view and add in those four constraints. Now that's only for the background image. Now we're going to select our button, our two labels and our image view here and what we're going to do now then is simply do the exact same thing, anchor them all around but there's going to be something different about this. Add those in and what you're now going to see, we get the red lines, we even get a warning in our project and that's basically telling us that once we adjust the screen size, these objects, they don't know what to do. Unlike the actual background image itself, which is like linked and locked to the sides of our application, when the sides kind of um, get bigger and smaller, the image view or the background image view goes with it. Well, these objects can't do it because they're linked to other objects which also don't know what they're doing. So we've got to create this almost like a, uh, uh, basically tell each object how it adjusts when the screen changes. So it's, it's, it's very simple, it's a very simple method to do. What we're going to do is add additional constraints on top of the ones that it already has. So let's start with the objects that we don't want their height to change. Now I don't want the height to simply change for both of the high score and the high score value here. So this is a little bit higher than I expect it or basically want it to be. Let's bring it back to, let's go for about 70, let's go for 70, no, 75 is good. Now bring this up as well. Now for the high score here, I don't want the height of this to change or adjust. I want the um, high score to be quite dominant on the screen. So I select the high score label, go to add an additional constraint and add a height constraint in. This means it's going to fixate it, so it's always going to remain 75 pixels high. Add that in. We're going to do the exact same thing now for the high score number value. You see this is 179. I'll fix that in too, add in that constraint. Now for both these, um, the logo and the start game button, we're going to use these to adjust to kind of compensate for the sizes of these two objects. So whereas I could also fixate those heights, instead I'm going to give them equal heights. So no matter what happens, if I add this in, you can see it kind of adjusted the screen there. No matter what happens, we get bigger and smaller, the start game button and the logo are going to have the same equal heights. These two are going to remain the same. So now we've told all the objects what they need to do, we now have no warnings, nothing, no warning at the top, no red lines, and that's because they now work, they now able to compensate each other. So if I go for the bigger iPhone screen, you're going to notice that the 
button, let's get it selected off there. The button, the logo gets bigger. The high score and the high score here that never changes size. Like you see between the two there, you can kind of see they never change size. The logo and button they do. You're going to see this mostly happen on the smaller iPhone screen sizes. So the small one. You can see the high score changes and stays the same. The logo and the button get smaller. And the smallest, again, the exact same thing happens. How cool is that? So we now know no matter what iPhone screen size we're going to be using, the objects, they adjust for, for us. So again, it's almost like a universal application solely on iPhone. That's kind of what it is. It's kind of cool, really cool. So now we know that works then, we're going to create all the actions and outlets. Let's get rid of this view here. There we go. We're going to create all the actions and outlets we're going to be needing to use on our home view. Now all we're going to need is an outlet for our high score label here, our high score number value, and our button. Then we're going to be also needing to create some nice rounded edges on these objects. But we'll get onto that in just a second. Now to create the actions and outlets that we're going to be needing, in this case it's only going to be outlets, we select the files owner at the top here and then go up to the two circles at the top right, which is our assistant editor. And we'll spaces over here so we can see uh, just a little bit easier there. So we got two files now in one. On the left, we have our main dot storyboard, and on the right, we have our view controller dot swift, which is the file just above it. Now, in the view controller dot swift is where we add in all the code to make our application do something. And just after the view did, uh, or the view controller here, and before the view did load, we're going to space it out so we got a little bit of room, and we're now going to add in all of our labels. So let's select our first one. I'm going to right click or control click and drag it over and drop it just there and create this new connection as an outlet and then give it a name. So I'm simply going to call it label one because we've got two labels within here and connect that up. For this one, drag and drop it over, call it label two and connect that up. And then we've got our button. We'll drag and drop that in two and I simply call it button. Uh, don't need to call it button one because we've only got one button in this uh, home view altogether. We'll connect that up. There we go. So we now have three objects. We now have three labels. So we can reference those um, kind of names, label one, label two, and button in this class and make it do something. Now we created the outlets for both of these labels. We're only going to be using the one label to begin with. And that is within our view did load. So let's space this up. So anything we place within the two brackets of this function view did load gets performed when the application first loads up. Hence the view did load. And what we're going to do is first, first we're going to get our label one. We're going to call that name. Then we're going to do dot layer. Now by doing dot and then going into something like the layer, we're now going into the attributes. Think of it as we're manually or coding the attribute, or basically within the attribute inspector, as if we would do within our interface builder. So we're going to do our lay, uh, label one dot layer, which means the whole layer of the label dot, and we're going to do corner radius. Uh, this means we want to adjust or give the corners of our label a certain value. So we equal that to a value. And let's go 5.0. So we're giving our corner radius a value of 5.0, which means we're going to get it to curve 5 pixels from the start to the end. So this value here, I uh, would suggest you play around with. Uh, you can make it bigger, you can make it smaller. It's entirely up to you. And we're going to repeat the process now for our button dot layer dot corner radius to simply equal, again, 5.0. There we go, that's all we need to do there. Now something else we need to do, because we're editing the layer, uh, kind of similar to how we added the background image within uh, our image view, because we're editing or kind of doing something that's going to go outside or around the actual image or the layer itself, we need to clip it to its bounds. So we're going to select the label and in the attributes inspector, scroll down to clip to bounds and the same goes within the button, scroll down to clip to bounce. There we go. So now these two lines of code here are going to simply be able to perform and we should hopefully have some nice corner edges on the edges of both of those objects. It's going to be really, really cool. 
So how can we do this then? So we need to build and run a test it on our simulator. So at the top left hand section here, we have Tappy Hands and it's already by default selected on the iPhone 7 Plus. Now that's quite a big simulator. Let's go for the simple basic iPhone 7. And then we're gonna press the little triangle here which then begins to build and run our application. And then all we need to do now is wait for the simulator to load up and we can test and see our application and how the corners have added to the objects themselves. So now the application is built and run, you can now see if I compare it next to the interface file that we've got the square edges on both the button and the label that they now don't have it because we added this corner radius in. Now remember the greater the value it equals to the more rounded the edges will be so just simply play around with that until you find something that you're quite happy with. But even though the button doesn't do anything, we can select it. Our home interface is now all set up. There's one last thing we're going to adjust before we move on to our next lecture, and that is our status bar. Now, remember I said that we're going to go for the blue and white themed application? Well, we can also change the color of the status bar. Granted, there's only two options, black or white, but I feel like black doesn't really fit in with the theme and white will kind of um, have a nice contrast to everything that we already have added in. So let's adjust the status bar then to fit to the theme of the application. So how we do this is back within our app here, we're gonna close our assistant editor, go back to our standard editor. There we go, by selecting uh, the button on the left hand side here to our standard editor. And we need to adjust this within our info dot p list this is our property list this is all the properties we can adjust within our application you can see we've got stuff like our bundle name we have the bundle version uh, we have um, if the application requires an iPhone environment uh, the device capabilities the support the in um, orientations stuff like that so let's let the bottom one and hit the enter button which we get to add a new property in the list and what we're going to simply select now is a view controller based application. Our space is out so we can clearly see what it is. So view controller based status bar appearance. We're going to select this to have default to no. We're basically telling us we don't want to have a status or have an appearance on the status bar. We're going to basically set this manually. So press command S to save that file. Then jump into our application delicate. So if you're familiar with the app Delica and the ViewController.Swift, if you are familiar, then this would be quite uh, simple for you. But if you don't know the differences between them, the ViewController.Swift controls the individual view in our screen. So if we've got 10 views, we're going to basically have 10 view controller files uh, to control the individual ones. The application Delica controls the application as a whole. So stuff like, you know, for example, we're about to change the status bar to white throughout the whole of our app. We do this within our app delegate. And more importantly, we do it within the function here of did finish launching with options. So that's basically the view did load of the entire application. And what we type in now is UI application, because that's what we're selecting, the application as a whole dot shared because you know basically showing this information throughout the whole app dot status bar style there we go that's because that's basically what we want to change and we equal this to a value again like how we added the corner radius in uh, the value we're equal it to is uh, this time it's not a number it's the you know type of color we want it to be so we do ui uh, status bar style again and do dot light content there's basically just two versions there's a uh, default which gives us a black status bar or light content that's all we need to do so if we now go to build and run this time you can see when the application loads up and it then takes us to our home view which comes up now we'll have a nice white status bar which is now themed to our entire application how cool is that so we've now created our application. We've designed our home screen. We've added a few little design features here and there, such as our status bar and our rounded edges. But this is the first step in creating this fully featured, simple iOS game. In the next lecture, we're gonna be moving on to creating and designing the game screen before we start to set up the capabilities and all the features we need to actually play the game before we progress further on in the course.